Welcome to this product demonstration and training session about termination of a RJ45 connector on a shielded Category 6A cable. I'm going to be demonstrating a couple connectors here and uh, the way we have them formatted, kind of a best practices technique on how to terminate shielded Cat6 and Cat6A cable for HD Base T type use. The uh, problem with HD Base T is it's very sensitive to grounding and ground plane issues. If your connectors are not properly grounded, you will have signal problems. So this technique that we're going to show you here is a way to eliminate those signal problems and have a very good strain relief on your RJ45. So the connector we'll be demonstrating is a Sentinel brand connector. This connector is a two-piece RJ45 for Cat6A and Cat6 shielded cables. Uh, it comes in a load bar, which is the one piece, and then the connector itself is another. We actually kit this in a best practices kit of 25 connectors. So we'll add 25 connectors, we'll do 30 load bars because people do tend to lose them and break them, so we have five extra load bars. And then we add a piece of copper tape for grounding. This is a 3M1181, which has conductive adhesive, kind of important to make sure the glue is conductive. And then we also add a three to one piece of shrink tubing to the kit too. And this gives you a much better performing connector when it's fully terminated. It does take a little bit longer than a standard RJ45, but at the same time, you're not gonna be called back to fix problems. The first step of putting any connector on is to prepare your cable. I always like to say that a properly prepared cable is gonna eliminate 90% of any field failures. Because we're doing shrink tubing on this, I wanna put the shrink tubing up the cable first, kind of like the BNC crimp tube on a BNC connector. Next step is gonna be to strip the cable. I'm gonna strip the cable approximately two inches. You do that with most RJ45s. I'm gonna use a strip tool here, a real simple cigar cutter type strip tool. I'm gonna go ahead and do two inches of jacket off. The tool has a little guide on it for maximum minimum cut. Whenever you're doing a shielded cable, you always wanna spin it for the minimum cut and not the maximum. One twist around should do it. Give the cable a little flex to pop the jacket. Pull your jacket off and you're left with your shield. Your shield is gonna be colored. This is the non-conductive side of the shield. So in this case, it's blue. You might see a orange or a yellow color, depending on the type of brand of cable you have. But this is a blue one. Um, in this case, with this technique that we have, we remove the shield. So the easiest way to do that is take diagonal cutters and nip the foil right at the base. Peel that off. Now, a good Category 6 or 6A cable is going to have a binder. You're going to have to remove that binder, too. You also have a drain wire. You do not want to cut the drain wire off. You want to fold this back against the jacket, get it out of the way. You have a rip cord on some cables. If you have a rip cord, you want to cut that off and remove it. Try to use the flush side of your, di of your diagonal cutters to cut close as possible. The binder is going to be the same way as a foil shield. You want to find the seam, follow the seam all the way down, nip it with a pair of diagonal cutters and just twist it off. Now, the cables, uh, Cat6A, Cat6 cables have what they call a separator in the middle, a spline. Um, that spline needs to be removed too, so you're going to separate your pairs, get them out of the way. And before I cut this off, kind of go into a little history here, Category 6 and Category 6A cables are going to be built pretty much the same way. They're going to have the same diameters, the same outside diameters. Um, they're very similar to each other. Um, the difference is on the UTP side, the unshielded side, the Category 6A cable will have what they call air spaces in the jacket to help space the conductors away from other cables nearby. So it's going to be a lot larger diameter than a shielded cable. This uh, spline is going to be common to both Cat6 and Cat6A. You want to remove it when you're dealing with this cable. Easiest way to do that is taking a pair of diagonal cutters, cut into each flute at an angle. And then when you're done with that, give it a twist and pop it off. Easiest way to do that. Now your pairs need to be untwisted to go into the RJ45 connector. Many different techniques for this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use my fingers for now, but there's techniques you can use cable jacketing um, and all sorts of other things in order to split the pairs. But you want to untwist these. Takes a little bit of work. Go down to the jacket. Do not go below the jacket. You don't want to go below the jacket, but untwist each pair. You want to keep the uh, conductors with each other. They're like striped. If you do have a happen to cable that has the conductors, one is pure white and one is uh, colored. You have to keep those together so you don't mess up your wiring code. You want to get all the convolutions out of it. This is probably the longest part of the entire termination is getting these things smooth and, and level. Now 
All right, so once you get all the conductors all straightened out and separated, then you put them in your correct wiring code for 568A or 568B, depending on which one you're going to use. For commercial applications, 568B is the standard everybody uses. 568A is more of a residential type standard. The difference between them is 568B only supports one of the old USOC phone lines. 568A supports two of the old USOC phone lines. So for residential use, you might need that. For commercial use, you definitely don't usually need that. So go ahead and put this in the right color code. I'm going to do 568B. Once you have these in a the color code, you've got to smooth these out a little bit and get them all level. You want to make sure all the convolutions are out of there. I'm going to have to load these into a load bar, so I want to make sure my color code's correct. I'm going to trim these off flush with the diagonal cutters. I'm actually holding these uh, pieces so they don't fly off. Also allows you to control your, your debris and stuff. The load bar has a side that's open and then a flat side. You're going to want to insert your wires into the open side. There is a stagger in there if you look at the load bar, one high, one low, because Category 6 shielded cable and Category 6A shielded cable has thicker insulation, so it can't fit side by side in the RJ45 like the non-shielded cables do. So you'll need to have the stagger in there for it to fit. It takes a little bit of work to get these lined up. Once you get them lined up, you want to hold the load bar laterally like this so it doesn't break on you. If you just push it back all the way right away, you can tend to break it or the wires will jump the uh, slots and stuff. So you want to make sure that you have it laterally nice and strong. You also want to get it back to at least three tenths of an inch close to the jacket here. Then you go ahead and trim off the wires. Not quite flush to the load bar, but pretty close. Now one step that we do for best practices on this connector is what people were doing in the past with shielded RJ45 connectors is they would basically wrap the drain wire around the end of the cable and put the connector on and crimp it down and say it's shielded. Uh, there's some more expensive connector formats where you actually have a crimping tool that crimps the drain wire in place. We're going to do something a little different here. In order to have a best practices, we're going to take a piece of copper tape. This copper tape is a 3M product, 1181. It has conductive adhesive, so both the glue and the copper is conductive. I'm going to put a piece of this around the jacket. Takes a little bit of finesse to get the copper tape off. Once you have it off, I'm going to lay this down, pinning the drain wire in place. I have the cable jacket and the copper tape kind of equal with each other. I don't want to have the copper tape extend past the jacket because then it could cut the conductors and cause a short. So copper tape on, I'm going to trim off my drain wire. And now I need to make this part of the connector oval. This part of the cable has to be oval in order for this to fit into the connector. It's too big of a diameter right now. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You take a, your fingers, you can actually pinch it and make it oval, or you can help it with a pair of pliers. You can use the crimping part of your handle on your diagonal cutters in order to pinch it down too. But you want to make sure that's nice and oval so it'll fit into the connector. I'm going to bend the strain relief back out of the way and open it up. So now I just have the opening. And I'm going to take my cable and slide this in here. And I want to make sure I got a good oval on it. And it'll slide right in, seat it all the way. I want to look at the front of the connector to make sure I have copper showing all the way across. If there's not copper showing all the way across, then you could potentially have an open. One of the wires got pushed back or something. So you want to make sure you have copper all the way across, which I do. So now I'm ready to crimp. Before I tuck the strain relief in or anything like that, I want to crimp now so I don't move anything. This particular connector uses any standard RJ45 crimp tool. You do want to have a heavier duty tool because Category 6 and Category 6A uses 23 gauge conductors. Most of the flimsier crimp tools are made for 24 gauge conductors. So you want to have the bigger tool, but you'll seat it all the way, make sure it's nice and level. Once it's seated all the way, you crimp it, cycle it all the way, hold it for a second, release. Make sure all your contacts are level. They all should be punched down. 
If any of them are punched up, you could potentially have a broken tool. But in this, this case, they're all punched down. I'll tuck my strain relief in. The difference with this best practices kit for HD Base T is this piece of shrink tubing actually replaces the need for the boot. Now, if to have a CAT6 certified cable or CAT6A certified cable, it has to have a boot applied to it. Um, in this case, the shrink tubing actually gives it better strain relief than a better connection for ground than the actual boot does. What this will do, it's a three to one ratio shrink tubing. So I'll slide this up over the connector just a little bit, like so. I'll grab a heat gun. You have to be very careful when you're actually applying heat here. This is a non-plenum cable, so the dielectric insulation is polyethylene, which melts very fast. So you want to be very, very quick on your heat application. So after your heat application, this is all shrunk down with three to one shrink tubing. This is a much stronger boot, much stronger contact. This cable is going to be able to withstand any sort of flexing that on the other style of techniques for terminating the drain wire would cause it to become undone or come frayed or something like that. This is going to be much stronger, much better. Um, we've had a number of HD base T installations where people were having problems with uh, systems having dropouts and issues and not working and we had them go through and do this best practices termination. Um, one particular installation was over 600 terminations and when they applied this best practices termination it fixed all their issues with the cabling. Um, everything worked fine after it came up. But this is a, our best practices recommended lowest cost economy connector for terminating CAT6 and CAT6A shielded cable.